But that's exactly it, is how, who do you tell? What do you say? Like, people will think you're crazy. I mean, the first instinct is, oh my God, you're crazy. I told my wife and she said, you're crazy. So I never told anybody else. People that I talked to at the time thought I was nuts. My parents thought I was a little crazy. Yeah, but yeah. you're nuts, they don't forget it, you know. Blazer 100.9, playing the best light rock from the 90s, 80s, and now, and a good morning to you. How you doing this morning, Blazer? A few welcome guests into my studio this morning. Uh, an interesting topic, it's, it's about um, extraterrestrial activity in Moonbeam. Someone asks, are you UFO hunters? And I said, no, um, we're not here to prove or disprove uh, the phenomena. We, there are people who have a story to tell. I'm absolutely interested in anything that anybody has to say. Yes, I was hired to, to design the historical signs along the, the trails, the nature trails. Uh -huh. And some of the signs were talking about the origin of the name Moonbeam. And for that reason, I've been searching throughout all the documents and I saw things referring to uh, si UFO sightings. UFO sightings? UFO sightings, yes. We don't know if it's true, if it's untrue. We, could, we can't say. I mean, I'm not what you could call a believer. Something is probably happening. What? We just don't know. The, the rings in the forest, we have to discuss that a little bit too. Uh, have, have you guys dabbled on that as well? Yeah, we were uh, coming through Sudbury on our way up and we stopped off at Science North and they put us on to the Ontario Geographical Survey and a couple of people there were very, very uh, interested in talking to us and of course, being scientists, very knowledgeable about where the difference between fact and fiction lies. Let, let's, let me think about this for a few seconds. Um, the, the explanation for the rings, mm. what is, what, why and how? How? Some of the ground is literally being dissolved away. It's dissolved away from beneath. Uh, very enigmatic. It was very exciting when we saw it because um, uh, we had known uh, previously from work other people had done that there was a depression at the edge of these rings. And we discovered um, uh, several years ago that that depression is because the ground is dissol being dissolved. And so um, and when the ground surface drops, a little swamp forms around the ring. And when that happens, we see a circle. And the other explanation, what, do you, what is being said? They're scientists, so they, if they can't find an explanation, they say unexplained. Okay. That's, that's about the most they can do professionally. Uh, and they don't just appear, they're always there. Um, but sometimes you see them better, like in winter, uh, or in the fall when the leaves are turning. Uh, but they're perfect circles, and uh, sometimes they interlock like Olympic rings. And they, they occur mainly in northernmost Ontario. They don't occur around Sudbury. Sudbury's not far enough north. They, they occur. Uh, Cochrane, um, uh, campus casing, moonbeam. Is there anything particular about moonbeam? Well, uh, there's a UFO in the middle of it, and, uh, and everybody stops and there's a picture taken at it, uh, including Abigail. Yes, <laughs> on the way into the field this summer. That's right. <laughs> we have a spaceship because astronauts came to the region in the 1970s. Real astronauts? Yes, real astronauts. Uh, they, one of them actually went on the moon. Oh, really? And um, we have it in one of our historical panels on the trails. Uh -huh. And after a while, the municipality thought that they should have themselves a mascot. And they didn't want a wildlife animal like the other municipalities around them. And they thought of a spaceship, which was original and unique. And it went well with the name Moonbeam. And it went well to represent the astronauts that had come up, up here in the 1970s. Right. So they decided to build the spaceship, which was built in I'm curious as to what are some of the strange findings that you're finding. The one that was actually a surprise we only found out the other day was the one about uh, power um, being sent out from specific stations, and then they call it, they get a, what was referred to as a kickback, where the power is shaking, but the power is sent out and is not being received. And the gentleman was telling us that it was his brother works at the power station, and this happens all the time. We're producing power and we get this huge kickback and then something's happening because it's stopping our freaking system to, to function and then on the other hand uh, cat doesn't receive power so where's the power go to right you know then i'm thinking you know power you know and if you're going to tell somebody some kind of freaking ufo you know, say, you're nuts they so forget it you know did you see that yeah what was that oh some thing falling i said it ain't falling it's going upwards yeah it's going up yeah <laughs> it's going, that's the problem it's not it's coming going, down it's going the wrong way he was saying that uh, he feels that the ufos are getting power out of power lines 
Okay. It's, it's just disappearing. So that was his explanation. Um, now we weren't f we aren't focusing on trying to prove or disprove at this point. We're, we want people's stories to get out and and let their their stories tell themselves. Okay. So I'm here uh, in Moonbeam, Ontario, and I'd like to introduce a friend of mine. If you'd like to step a little closer, uh, could I ask you what your name is, sir? My name is Jim Lamotte. Okay, and what do you do here in uh, Moonbeam? Uh, me and my wife own the uh, Moonbeam Golf Club. Does your golf course have any particular connection with this uh, spacecraft here? Well, uh, I don't know if it was the exact spacecraft, but uh, I've seen, uh, to me, I, I've been in sci-fi all my life, and uh, I think I've seen a UFO in the, in the sky. That's really? Right. Around here, or? No, at the uh, Kapski, at the Moonbeam Golf Club. At the Moonbeam Golf Club. Maybe we should go over there and have a, uh, have a walk around and see see if we see anything today. Certainly. And what time of day did you see this again? Or oh, this was about 2.30 in the morning. 2.30 in the morning. I was letting my dog out of the trailer. And as I was letting them out, I looked up and I seen two big strobes. This looked like two big lights. So I said to myself, well, geez, it's probably a UFO. And I, I wanted to jump in my gator at that night because I had lights on it and take a ride out. But I just... I got scared. People that I talked to at the time thought I was nuts. Um, Recently? Nope. This is back uh, in the early 70s. And everybody said, oh, we, it had to be a military aircraft that you were seeing. And uh, I didn't really think so. So I got my dog, went back into the trailer. I sat on the chair for another 10 minutes staring at them, wondering when they're going to take off. It lasted that long? Oh, it lasted. 15 to 20 minutes at least. And you didn't wait? They never moved one. They never moved because I was using the tree as a guide. Yeah. They never moved positions. And one night on my way into my scuba lessons, I was going up what's called Utopia Hill. And a, a light was following me. It was, a, it was a steady, constant light. It wasn't a strobing light that you see on, on an aircraft or anything. It was a, a steady light followed me all the way up the hill and as I got towards the top of the hill I kept looking over my shoulder and, what is this and uh, I slowed down and as I slowed down uh, it kind of hovered for a second and it veered off to the to the right and it was gone yeah. and then I finally said ah shit I can't just stay up all night staring at the light so I went to bed wow and then in the morning I told my wife and like I said she told me I was crazy so I decided not to tell anybody else and, <laughs> but now you're telling us, so yes. something changed. Yes, uh, what happened is other, I found out other people have uh, had seen it. Actually, one person said he saw the lights suddenly disappear, oh. which I never saw. He said he, uh, so he might have been watching at the same time as me, but a little later, and he said they just shot across the sky and they were gone in a matter of seconds. Uh, I had seen other lights in the area, and, and they were just white lights and nothing fabulous or anything. My parents thought I was a little crazy, but they always did think I was crazy. <laughs> when I got up, I do my chores of cutting fairways and that, and so when I got in this area, I definitely got off my sheen and walked a little bit along the bush line, but I didn't see anything. Didn't so see any, any sign of it? Any or sign or anything like that. Of it, so. Bit of a mystery then. Yes. But uh, like I say, I've always looked up, I always like the start of it. Now I just look up a little more. <laughs> it's just a unique municipality and you can't ignore that, that you live here, that you're a tourist, you just can't ignore that type of thing. And I think it links really well with the fact that there's been UFO sightings and it all comes down together and it all links together. We just have to go and find out more answers to our questions as to why. But the geography of Moonbeam is really well placed, I mean, even aliens would be content to visit, I think. I love it here.